Hello and welcome. This is Fireworks. The July 22 local government election in Lagos may have come and gone. The APC carried the day in that <coughs> election, but that victory may have come at a great cost to some within the party. Now, what are the lessons learned? And specifically, when will the All Progressives Congress move from the perceived trajectory of internal wranglings to oneness within the fold? These are some of the questions that I'll put forward through to my guests today on the program. As I bid you welcome, I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Thank you for staying tuned. This is Fireworks, and today my guest is Dr. Moise Banire, a senior advocate of Nigeria, and he is the National Legal Advisor of the All Progressives Congress. Thank you for your time, sir. My pleasure. Let's start this way. Um, the dust has settled with the, may have settled with the just concluded um, All Progressives Congress local government election in Lagos State, of which of course other parties participated in. But um, how far has the party gone with resolving some of the issues that arose from that uh, election? Well, I believe that uh, something has been done already because uh, today I understand there uh, should have been a stakeholders uh, meeting in which certainly part of the agenda will be the reconciliation of our group members, so it's, which is certainly a step in the right direction. Um, you, have, you had your reservations um, ahead of that election and of course only in recent times your ward um, in Mushi uh, ro arose from a meeting and announced your suspension and uh, the party at the national level has announced a nullification of that suspension. What does this say about your politicking um, at home? Well, in the first instance, it's a misrepresentation to say my word. Of course, you, if you followed it effectively, you will know it wasn't my word anyway. There were some people that I called them say, acting officers as against the actual officers of the party. So certainly that's a misrepresentation. Uh, so nothing actually transpired in that regard, so I regard it as a non-event. Okay, but, but are you losing ground at that level? How? I at don't the know. grassroots? Let me quickly draw this distinction. I've said it consistently. I'm not a professional politician. So losing ground is not, again, is a non-issue. Because all I do, as far as I'm concerned, is to add value to the society by way of good governance. Uh, so for me, I believe that and what I've done over the years too is always to govern and support for the party that I consider is progressive in nature. And that's all they continue to do. So the question of losing ground or not losing ground is inconsequential in this regard. You're, you say you're not a professional politician. I'm not. But um, people know you as um, a godfather of some sorts, especially in Mushi constituency. Well, I've never been a godfather to anybody. And I don't believe in it anyway, so I can't be. It's not possible. Some say that you have benefited from imposition well, in the past. Well, unfortunately, I don't know what they meant by that because I, to the best of my knowledge, and grammatically, imposition is usually associated with elective offices. I've never had an elective office and I've never contested any. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I couldn't have benefited anyway. I think it must be a problem of, um, of um, conception in this regard because, uh, like I said to you, I've never contested any. And you have never installed local government chairman in Mushi and, and let me even tell you, Odiolo, I, I've never, let me tell you, I've never, if they want a to certain know, the only, Sunday, I, I was going to tell late. you, I was going to tell you now, the only election ever done was that of uh, Babatunde Adekutu. I never even participated in the selection or election of you can go and find out. Even my immediate PA, who is there now at the House of Assembly, Babatu, I mean, Lai or Lawali, go and ask him, contested alongside Adequito, and the election was held in Honorable Bolaji Yusufa in last office. I refused to double it to you. Go and ask them. Even the person that represented me as councillor, I didn't know for a long time. It has never been my own instead to do what? So Babatu, the Adequito was not your candidate? Go and find out. He marched through the Electoral College, Eddie, the Honorable Bolaji Yusufa, in last of it. Ask anybody in the local I was not even part of it. My own PA before Lai Owale participated and lost. 
But what about uh, a certain Adeyemi in Odiolowo? Who, Ade, Ade Ade who was one of your political godsons? Or is? Again, not a correct representation of event. You can go and find out. I was not even there in the audio law. I was not even, I was even distant from it because the name was sent to the local government to be the candidate. So it's not correct. All these are just mere fallacies. So these two, two uh, past chairmen of the I've just told you local how, governments I'm, 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 in that area, I've just told they were you, never loyal to I'm, you. You see this question of loyalty, it depends on what you, nobody, I do not expect anybody to be loyal to me. You must be loyal to the system, not me. I should be loyal to me. It's my family that should be loyal to me. For the two terms, Babatunde Adekwito, now late, yes. uh, the, that he served, yeah. reports say that uh, your picture was um, conspicuous in his office. Fine, if he shows to. If he shows to. So you disown any um, title of being political godfather in Mushi and Odiolo? Certainly, or anywhere. So what are your or interests? Anywhere. Or what were your interests in this just concluded local government election in Lagos? Again, what maybe, were your uh, reservations that led to you know let court me, actions? Let, let me first refresh your memory that as I said in one of my correspondents, I'm the national legal advisor of the party. My responsibility essentially is to ensure compliance with the party constitution. Okay. All over Nigeria, 36 states and Abuja, and which I've been doing. Lagos will not be the first to do local government election. We've had in almost about 14. And I ensure proper compliance. So for me, it's a matter of duty. Nothing beyond that. Matter of duty to ensure at any point in time, I must see that party members comply with the dictate of the constitution. That's all. Beyond that, no personal interest. So in the primary that was concluded before this election, uh, there was no compliance with party constitution? Of course, you know, that was my grudge to say, please, you need to comply with what the party constitution says. That's all. But uh, in the, you know, uh, con consequent court action that followed, um, the party chairman expressed his reservation in a, in a statement that he made available to newsmen. And he says, I quote, how can the so-called party members brought in as defendants be the same persons disavowing the party primaries? And uh, he accuses you of abusing your office as national legal advisor. Well, again, I will not say much on that. That is subjudice already, because it's a subject of a libel suit already. But what I know is that certainly aggrieved members generally have access to court. My duty is to defend the party. But I can tell you for free, apart from being a senior advocate of Nigeria, I'm a bencher. I owe a duty first and foremost to justice and the court before my client. So, and I warned ahead to say that please, in the unlikely event of non-compliance with the constitution, I will not go to court and lie, please. So ensure you adhere to the provision of the constitution. So, and that simply summarizes the issue. We're waiting. Do you deny any um, opinion that you wrote a, a few years back calling for um, internal democracy within the All Progressives Congress? I've always, that has always been my position all over Nigeria. Everybody knows me for that. So is that uh, edit, uh, opinion directed at anybody in particular? Certainly in the party? not. It couldn't have been. In fact, there's a recent one I wrote, I think it's in the Punch newspapers also. I wrote about the court and internal democracy in Nigeria. So illustrating how the court have been evolving the concept of internal democracy. There's nothing harmful or directed against any specific, uh, particular person. What's your relationship with the national leader of the All Progressives Congress? You may assure you, very, very cordial. Very, very cordial. Very, as far as I'm concerned, it's very cordial. Has he been um, seen or demonstrated internal democracy as the national leader of the All Progressives Congress? He in does the not party? even have a duty to so do. It's when there are no crises enough that we, carry, we now take ourselves to him. It's the responsibility of we officials of the party at all levels to ensure internal democracy. So your opinion, written some years ago, wasn't directed at him? Oh, certainly not. How could it have been directed at him? It wasn't a party official then, and it's still not a party official. It's our leader. So it's when there are crises that leaders now come in to resolve and reconcile parties. 
You weren't uh, bounced from Bodilon sometime in February 2015. Well, I'm not aware of that. I've never been banned. You can find out from me myself now. In fact, it would be, again, disrespectful to his person and personality to ban anybody from me. A party leader does not ban anybody. Hmm. But it is, uh, it is a general um, um, culture, so to speak, within the party uh, for people to say that it is whoever it is that the national leader assigns or brings that will stand for elec elective positions at the primary level and will eventually emerge as the candidate, uh, which is something that you frown at. No. Because you are, you're calling you are, you are for internal democracy. Correctly. That is endorsement. Endorsement is not forbidden. It's not forbidden. A leader can endorse any candidate, any aspirant. What about the former governor of Lagos State? He wasn't endorsed. Was there any primary that was conducted that saw the emergence of Babatunde Fakulani? Certainly there was. Maybe you forgot it. There was. As the there was a candidate primary. of the ACN at that there time. There was a for primary. The there was a primary. In fact, all the other people boycotted it. That was when the concept of Kosoro came in. <laughs> okay. We'll pursue this point a bit more, but let's take a break. You're watching Fireworks, and today I have with me the National Legal Advisor of the All Progressives Congress, Dr. Moise Banyere. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying tuned to Fireworks. In the last half hour, I've been talking with the National Legal Advisor of the All Progressives Congress and a Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Dr. Moise Banyere. And we've been looking at the just concluded local government elections in Lagos and, of course, matters arising. Now, let's pick up from where we stopped. Uh, since you insist that there was uh, a primary that was boycotted that saw the emergence of the former governor of uh, Lagos State as the uh, candidate of the former ACN at that time, do you deny that um, in a number of states of the Federation, all is not well with the All Progressives Congress? And why has that been um, you know, a pattern of politicking within the fold? It's not our fault, it's not peculiar to APC. It's just generalized and it's normal in party politics. There must be wrangling, there must be conflict. It's nothing unusual, nothing unusual. So um, what role have party leaders played? You know, for instance now, you're the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, to resolve some of these of issues? Of course, we do a lot of it, otherwise the party will have by now collapsed. It's because of the fact that we address a lot of all these issues promptly and in a timely fashion that you've not seen the collapse of the party. And again, we have some other structures that deal with this kind of a thing. We have a national caucus and shortly, hopefully, we have what is called the advisory council that is replacing the VOT of the party that will deal with all these issues. But beyond that, also from time to time, we set up reconciliation committee that goes to state with such uh, crisis. So it's just normal. So what is the, what, what, what are the costs that have come uh, as a result of this internal wrangling? There's not anybody can do about that. Let me confess to you from my own experience in party policy. You can't help that one. There must always be conflict. Because interests are bound to conflict from time to time. It's the ability to manage it that makes the party itself. Let's look at the Senate presidency seat. Does, do you consider that a great cost? of uh, the internal wranglings of the party, they just, you know, many disagreements. You know, we were, even say, we were just taking off when that one occurred. We were just even taking off then. And again, you, as you can see now, progressively, it's settling. So it's normal. It's nothing unusual. So how will it affect, um, you know, subsequent elections? I do not see it affecting it in any manner whatsoever because we continue to put our house in order from time to time. Now, back to um, your alleged suspension. You say that uh, it's a misrepresentation of what really should be, and if they knew the Constitution, those who carried it out would have uh, reconsidered. But really, uh, if that was the case, would you now require the party at the national level to nullify your suspension? In fact, you do not even require it. They didn't nullify anything. They only told them that to the extent that what, had, what was purportedly done was not in consonance with the Constitution. It's a nullity. It's simple. 
which we do regularly. It's not peculiar to Lagos. In fact, that's an average of almost three, four <laughs> per week that we deal with such like that. That people will just wake up in one local government and one word and say we suspect, we expel, <laughs> which is usually knowledge. So we don't even bother ourselves. We ignore most of the time that our times when it's necessary in order not to cause confusion, we now write to them to say no, just ignore. This is the right person to continue to deal with. So it's nothing unusual. For example, it's just that what I've just found out is that I, a lot of people still need education about the content of our constitution. For example, let me give you an example, expulsion. It's only the National Convention of the Party that can even expel anybody, no other person. So it will be a waste of time for anybody to expel, expel. It's a complete waste of everybody's time. Okay, still on the local government election, um, some um, stakeholders believe that it should henceforth now be the responsibility of INEC to conduct elections, that uh, state electoral commissions are conducting uh, shambolic elections, <laughs> so to speak, especially because of the turnout of most of these local government elections in these states where you see the ruling party carrying the day, that it's an abuse of what democracy really should be. What are your thoughts? I think there's already a proposal adopted by the National Assembly, not even some set of people. It's already adopted by the National Assembly. Honestly speaking, I subscribe to it. What would be the implication of that for sitting governors who hold, um, you know, who wield extreme control on local Let government Let me tell you elections? the way I remind their excellencies regularly at our meetings is that there's no governor that will stay there forever till eternity. No, no. The best you can be there for will be eight years. So it's always better for us to support whatever that is right and good and constitutional. So that by the time we exit through, we have some form of security. It's as simple as that. We, nobody can ever be in one place forever. Speaking of which, would you like to specify which particular governor you're talking about? No, that, I tell you, there are excellencies. There are so many. Well, you know, as legal advisor, it's not only Lagos that have had issues with. I've had issues with some other states. For example, I remember a particular state in which somebody was disqualified because he was a man for the purpose of the election. There is no provision like that in our constitution to say you disqualify somebody because this man is a man. No. So the matter went to court. And when they went to the aggrieved person went to court, I went to court to say, yes, sorry, in our own party constitution, there is nothing like that. But when the governor contacted me, I explained to him to say, Your Excellency, you've done the wrong thing. There's no provision like that. You could have found any other basis for disqualifying, but you can't. You couldn't have done that on gender basis. The only way out now is to go and appeal to the aggrieved person, find a way of reconciling, which we eventually did. So there are so many. There is another state where they had the local, quite recently, you call it, that we had something similar to non-compliance, and I wrote a letter to the state chairman. He brought it to the attention of the governor. The governor called me, and I explained to him just the same manner I've just said. And the governor said, oh, OK, OK, I understand now. We, we reconfigure, and they did. So it's not peculiar to any governor or any state. It's a general thing, because you see, the truth of the matter is that we must continuously have respect of the rule of law. That's my position. It's as simple as that. If you do not, you see, your only option to rule of law, like I always tell people, is rule of man. And what that one implies is training. So for me, all of us must continuously embrace rule of law, regardless of who we are or where we are. And I believe that it's one of the fundamental problems of the entire country. Because there are so many big men in Nigeria, as a, as a whole, a lot of big men, so believing that they are above the law. The sitting government adhere with the rule of law in the run-up to the local government election. I'm talking specifically, they did comply with the law in conducting local government election in Lagos State as at when it was supposed to. The rule of law, you know, in this regard, there are so many aspects of it, depending on the one you want. If you are looking at LASEC law, for example, to the extent that there was composition of the uh, LASEC, to the extent of the various steps taken by LASEC, which ordinarily, and I believe, must be independent of the state, which is the responsibility of LASEC. So you will say all that the state owes is put in place LASEC, which was put in place before the election. Simple. Uh, 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 perhaps I should be more specific. Yeah. 
Um, the tenure of local government chairman in Lagos State um, before this uh, 2017 election expired during the tenure of former governor Babatunde Fashola. Yes. Three year tenure. But local government elections were not conducted until about four years later in 2017. So where was the rule of law in the action well, of those now governors? Now that you are specific. And now. there are governors within your party. No, now that you are specific. I've heard this position. I've even written a memo to that effect that it is illegal. It is unconstitutional. It is not right. And I'm saying so again. I'm repeating so. The Supreme Court had duplicated the practice up to the case of, uh, I think, Fire Me and uh, State something. I can't remember the citation correctly now. But up to the case decided on a kitty recently that, look, none of those, either administrator, uh, executive secretary, caretaker, all those things are totally unconstitutional. So for that Because the concept of the constitution is clear. He said local government must be run by democratically elected officials. So once they are not democratically elected, then it becomes unconstitutional. So your party is guilty of... Some of us, uh, some of our people are guilty, but we are encouraging ourselves every day. In fact, with all sense of humility, I would say I triggered the process about one and a half years ago when I wrote the first memo generally and I copied virtually everybody that there is a need for our state, particularly APC state, to embark on the conduct of local government election. Mm. So because of your legalistic uh, disposition towards uh, the, the constitution and what should be done, the way it should be done in line with the law, some say you are towing the line of activism, um, which is a departure from politics, and so you may lose out uh, from all of this. I, well, I don't know what they mean by losing out. As national legal advisor of this party, I earn nothing, either by way of salary or allowance. Rather, I spend my earned money on the party. The essence is to engender good governance. When there is good governance, all of us gain. That is the reality. But on the other hand, I agree to a large extent that I will find it difficult to continue to survive within <laughs> The political arena because my idea seems to be a bit radical in this um just concluded el election yes specifically in the primary that was re conducted you never had um, a candidate for um mushing local government area can i have candidate for what you see in a serious crime but uh, an organization that uh, claimed to represent you said that uh, some candidates were not allowed access. The, some well, delegates were not well, allowed I, access to the voting arena. Well, I'm glad you used the word claim to. Well, I am not contesting. What do I United need United Action. United Action, uh, United Action for Change is the totally non-political, totally non-political movement. But they represent you. No, no, no. The organization no, no, represents no, you. No, no, no. Listen, they do, I'm a member. I'm in fact, indeed, I'm the convener. And what we do, we have PDP members there, we have APC members there, we have Africa, we have, in fact, half of the members there are activists. They are not in any political party. They have a totally different agenda from any politics. They are only, be it PDP, be it uh, Saraki issue, be it Magu issue, they double into things that they believe that they need to double into in order to enhance the society. That's all. They are not political. It doesn't concern them. We don't have any candidate. But as far as the reconducted primary in Mushin local government area was concerned, that organization represented your interests in On calling they, in calling uh, that primary. They may, if they may, maybe they may, sham. go and look at it. I'm sure that you didn't it, watch them well. Because they complained that the primary conducted uh, the, denied access we to yeah. original delegates we to come in and vote. We complain about anything that is improper. We complain about anything that is not necessarily that one alone. We complain about anything that is improper, we complain. But your candidate did not win that primary. I do, number one, let me even tell you if you want to hear, there was no primary. I can tell you for free, there was no primary. I am saying so without fear of contradiction as a legal advisor of this party. If the chiefs are down, I will analyze it to you legally to show you clearly that. So there you was don't no recognize primary. the candidate that emerged from the reconducted primary? There was no primary, no reconducted. There was none. I'm telling you, that one I can tell you without fear of contradiction that there was none. But there was a court action that nullified the first primary that was conducted. In fact, primary could not have even taken place at, at that time. Go and look at the LASEC program. It couldn't. It couldn't.
people have even taken place by the LASEC program. I've got several cases for the party at the Court of Appeal and on issues bordering or identical with this situation. Okay, so what is the status of the election that held on July 22 that saw the emergence of the uh, candidates that won the election in that local government? That area? is all judges already. Okay, but <laughs> so what are your thoughts <laughs> about the developmental strides of this current government in Lagos? He's doing his own best. He's doing his best. It's as simple as that. Are you saying this because uh, you know efforts of reapproachment are on to settle no, the we, we internal rifts within the party? Let me tell you, we always have different perspective of issues. I will give you for example. I was coming this afternoon with somebody on Tom Melan Bridge at Orochoke. I saw some reclamation going on, and I said, ah, I don't know what they are trying to do here, but if it's the uh, terminal they are trying to do for this water transportation and car park. I said, this will be wonderful. This will be great. For example, if my thought is correct or coincide with that, then of course I have every cause to praise him. For example, there are some that I will disagree. I will give you an example. Just very close here now, um, Chonibara in front of Chonibara here, the green there, the green that we put there before was displaced for a concrete. And I disagree with that one. That is a bad approach. The same thing, if you go that decoration, the statue that they just put at uh, Maryland, is not safety. Safety, uh, how do I say, compliant. You don't put that at, at an intersection. You don't put it at an intersection. So there are some things that I would disagree with. There are some that I would praise. So it happens like that. You said he is doing his own best. Yes. But... Um is not doing the best that you would like to see. No, uh, there are areas of improvement. Okay. I believe there are areas of improvement. Finally, what are, will be your last words for the All Progressives Congress um, as you know it plans and prepares for the 2019 general election? Well, it's to believe in ourselves first. When I say ourselves, our manifesto, and I dare to the party constitution as much as possible because that's the only way we can eliminate friction within the party. As an addendum, please tell us your thoughts on the recent clamor for local government autonomy. Again, I totally support local government autonomy. Total, I want to see a situation where a professor will go and contest in the local government, believing that he has that autonomy to experiment his idea. I want to see a situation where a minister will descend from his office and say, I want to go and serve my immediate neighborhood and become chairman because he has the freedom. But if you do not have that freedom, you have an idea in your brain, but somebody somewhere is saying, you can't do this. No. Realize that they also have their own legislature. They have their legislature. They have their full complement. Let's give them an opportunity. That's how it's been on Fireworks Today. I'm sure you've gotten further insight as to the position, the disposition of the National Legal Advisor of the All Progressives Congress towards some of the issues that are arose uh, from the just concluded local government election and of course other matters relating to development especially at the grassroots level. I urge you to join me again sometime next week when I bring you another interesting edition of the program. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Bye for now. Thank you very much sir. My pleasure.